Hey friend, Chris here from widelogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 36 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website, where I'll help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to become an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making awesome music and this amazing application. Today, let's explore grouping in Logic Pro. Groups allow you to affect multiple tracks and channel strips simultaneously whether you want to adjust levels of multiple tracks from a single fader, mute and solo an entire group at the same time, comp together multiple take folders as if they were one, and so much more. To get started with groups, let's open up the mixer using key command X. We have a group field that we can use to assign each individual track and channel strip to a particular group. We can also see this group field is reflected in the inspector as well. Usually you want to assign multiple tracks and channel strips to a group. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to select my overhead track, and then hold shift and click on the snare bottom track or channel strip. And then I'll go up to the group field and click. We get this pop-up menu and right at the bottom of the menu, we have the option to assign these drum tracks to a brand new group. Okay, so the group field has now been populated with the number one. And that's because we've assigned these channel strips to group number one. As can be seen in this new group section of the inspector, we can see group number one is on. And we can see in the name field that we have five members in total in group one. So let's go ahead and name this drums. All right, now the group name is populated in each group field for each channel strip that's part of the group. And if we go to the bottom of the group section in the inspector and click on the disclosure triangle next to settings, we can specify which aspects of our tracks and channel strips will be manipulated as part of the group. For example, any change that we make to automation mode, volume, or mute, will be applied to every channel strip and track in the group. So if I deselect my selection and make an adjustment of the kick level, every other channel strip in the group is offset by the same exact amount. Great. If I mute any of these channel strips, all five tracks are muted. And if I change my automation mode to that of maybe touch, all five tracks and channel strips revert to touch as well. And we can easily tell Logic which parts of our tracks and channel strips should be part of the group functioning and which parts should not. So let's say I don't wanna mute every single channel strip in my track when I press a mute button. We can disable mute. And maybe I do want the panning to be adjusted for everything in the group. So now if I mute the snare top track, we don't mute the four other channel strips. And if I adjust panning, all five channel strips in the group are adjusted. Sometimes you need to be able to make an adjustment to a channel strip without affecting the entire group as a whole. If I want to adjust the level of the kick, when I click, hold, and drag, I'm affecting everything else in the group. So we can choose to either disable the group itself. So now I can make an adjustment of my kick. Or we can deactivate all groups in the mixer. Or we can just use key command shift and G to quickly enable and disable groups as you need to. So if I use shift and G to reactivate, now let's set these Mellotrons to their own group. So I'll call this Mellotron. And if I use shift and G, all groups have been deactivated. I can make an adjustment. Then shift and G to reactivate and make a global adjustment to the group and everything's reflected across the group. You can also quickly add a channel strip to the last created group just by holding option and clicking on a group field. So I've now added this third Mellotron to the Mellotron group without having to go through the drop-down menu to add it. Again, hold option and click. But of course you can assign and reassign groups for multiple channel strips just by selecting multiple channel strips, either holding command and clicking or holding shift and selecting the first and last channel strips that you wanna include. So I'll select no group, then click, and go down to Mellotron once again, group two. And there we have it. And you can also assign channel strips to multiple groups. With the base, I'll assign it to a group called group three, with which I'll call base and kick. If I click on the group field for the kick and then hold shift and go down to group three and click while holding shift, I've now assigned the kick to group one and three. So group one would be the drums. Group three would be bass and kick. Just keep in mind what's been set for each group. For example, if I adjust the bass 
The level for both is adjusted because that's been assigned in the group settings for the bass and kick. But if I adjust the kick fader, I adjust the entire group of the kick and bass plus all the drum channel strips as well. Because in the drum group settings, volume is assigned there as well. Now let's go one step further and select all the channel strips in the mixer. Click, hold shift and click on group four. And we'll call this full mix. I'll deselect all options for this group. I just wanted to demonstrate in this case that we've assigned every channel strip to multiple groups. In the case of the kick, one, three, and four. And in fact, I'll right click or hold control and click on group four to then delete this group. All right. Besides managing different aspects of channel strips in the mixer, groups are fantastic for managing different take folders, automation, and flex time edits. For example, we have a drum group right here, and let's mute all the other tracks. And taking a look at the drum group, we can see that we have take folders for each, the overheads, the hi-hats, kick, snare top, and bottom. We can also see that the kick has been muted because in the bass and kick group, we have the mute setting enabled for the group functionality. So I'll use shift and G to disable the groups, unmute the kick, and then re-enable using shift and G. Okay, from here, I wanna be able to make take folder edits that are applied to every single take folder in my group. I've quick swiped this section of take 14 for the hi-hat, but if we take a look around, we can see that this edit has not been applied to any other drum take folder. And it's especially important with multi-mic recordings that these edits that you make in terms of comping and flex time are exactly the same across the entire group of tracks. So let's use key command, command and Z to undo. And let's go over to the settings and enable the option for editing selection. So now we take a look at the overheads alongside the hi-hats and make an edit. We can see that edit has been applied to take 14 on the overheads, the hi-hat, not our kick track, but the snare, as well as the snare bottom. And most likely the reason for this is because the kick track is part of not only the drum group, but also the bass and kick group. So if we undo, use key command Z a few times to make sure that we remove this edit. All right, let's now dissolve the bass and kick group. So now we have editing selection. If I make this selection, We can see now our edit has been applied to the kick, the snare, snare top, and everywhere across the drum group. Furthermore, if you want to make flex time edits across an entire group, it's especially important to maintain the phase relationships of these multi-mic tracks. So to do that, let's go to the drum group once again and enable this option for quantize locked audio. Let's now show flex time. And for our group, Let's close all these take folders so we can see all these tracks together. I'm gonna select slicing for my drums. Logic's going to analyze the transient content for each of the drum takes in each take folder. This could take a second. All right, if we now open the take folder for the overheads and we zoom in, okay, we can see that transient markers have been applied anywhere there's a transient across our group. It's worth pointing out for multi-mic groups that you really should hone in on a track or two for transient data. In the case of a drum kit, it's usually the kick and snare because they're the most consistently played drums across the performance. So I'll deselect the Q reference button for the overheads, the hi-hat, as well as the snare bottom. Now, if we make an adjustment to the timing of our snare, I really wanna be able to hone in on this so you can see some edits. We click, hold, and drag on our flex marker. I'm moving everything in this take. So let's hover our mouse in the bottom third, click, hold, and then drag. All right, and now I'm making this edit across all the tracks in the group. We can see those movements in the group again. We go up to quantize and maybe set an eighth note value. Everything's been locked together and the phase relationship of the performance should be preserved. 
We take a listen. We turn this off. We'll reset. Fantastic. Lastly, another type of group functioning called VCA groups or faders can also be applied in the mixer for adjusting the levels of multiple channel strips simultaneously from a single fader. If we navigate to the mixer, we can customize the channel strips in the mixer by holding control and clicking to get a pop-up menu with which we can use to create a new VCA4. But also, if you go down to channel strip components in this pop-up menu, you can further customize the look and feel of the mixer. So let's introduce the VCA field. All right, cool. At which point I'm going to select all my drum tracks as well as the bass, and then click on this field to create a new VCA. And check it out, we now have this new fader that allows us to adjust the level of the overheads, the hi-hat, the kick, snare, and bass all at the same time. VCA stands for Voltage Control Amplifier, and this is a function from analog consoles that allows you to affect the levels of multiple channel strips from a single fader. So we can still adjust the individual levels of individual tracks. While being able to affect the group as well. VCAs really come into their own when you're working with a project that has tons of tracks, tons of channel strips, and you want to be able to adjust levels of entire groups from just a couple of faders. For example, let's manipulate our drums and bass and our keys back to back. If you watch the track stacks video in the series, folder stacks are essentially VCA groups and faders too. Folder stacks just add that extra layer of a collapsible and expandable folder for easy organizing. But in either case, you have plenty of options when it comes to grouping your tracks and channel strips in Logic Pro. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more next week in our Newbie to Ninja series. Take care.